Welcome to a new episode of Let's Code a Linux Network Driver. In today's video I want to show you how to transmit frames within a Linux Network Driver. And as an example I will use my simple SBI Ethernet device, the Z device. But before we start implementing some code, let's go through the steps which are required for an Ethernet frame to be sent over a networking interface. And to make it a little bit more visual, I painted a small slideshow. So let's say Linux want to send a frame for a given networking interface. Every network interface has a queue for outgoing frames. And what Linux will do, it will check if the queue is running and if there is a place left in the queue for the new frame. And if these two conditions are met, Linux will add the new frame to the queue. And here on the right hand side we have our networking driver and for a networking device the so-called network device operations, the netdev ops, basically tell um, what functions are supported by this driver. And this networking device operation struct has a field ndo start xmit and this here is a function pointer which should point to a function which takes care of sending frames. So if a new frame is added to the queue, the Linux kernel will call the corresponding ndo start xmit function of the corresponding driver. And there is also something to mention about the network queue. In order to get a little bit of flow control, a driver can start and stop the queue because if the queue is stopped, Linux will not add more frames to the queue. And as our set device is extremely simple, the set device only supports one frame being in the queue. So after adding a frame, the first thing the um, transmit function will do is it will shut off the queue and if the frame was transmitted successfully, it will restart the queue again. Okay, good, so now the driver has started the transmit function, so what must happen in the transmit function? So here is a small um, recap of our system. On the left hand side we have our Raspberry Pi on which we are running the set driver and on the right hand side we have our set device with the networking jack. And the two devices are connected over SPI bus for shoveling data around in an IRQ pin so the set device can tell the Raspberry Pi a frame was transmitted successfully or a frame was received successfully. And in order to send a frame, the driver has to send out a command over the SPI bus. So this first um, byte it will send will be 6 and 6 is the command for sending a frame. Then the driver has to send two bytes which give the length of the frame and then it has to send length amount of data bytes. And after this package was received by the set device, what the set device will do is it will transmit the data and after the transmission was done is it will raise the interrupt pin and will generate an interrupt on the Raspberry Pi on the driver to tell the driver, okay, the frame was sent successfully. And now the driver has to check which interrupt um, occurred because this interrupt pin is used for every interrupt which can happen on the set device. So what the driver will do now is it will write out the SPI command 8, which is the command for getting the currently pending interrupts and the set device returns a 10 hexadecimal, here in this case. So this one bit set means the transmission of a frame was done successfully. And after receiving this command, the set device will also clear the interrupt so it's no longer active on the Raspberry Pi. And of course, after getting the notification a frame was successfully transmitted by the set device, the driver can now start the queue again so Linux can queue new networking frames. Okay, so much for the theory, now let's implement the driver. Okay, so here I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH and the first thing I will do is I will navigate into my folder for my set driver. And then I will open up the source file of my driver. 
So the first thing I need to do here in this struct set net, which bundles all the various stuff I need for managing one set device, I will add two new fields. So the first field I will add is a pointer from the type struct work struct xmit work because I will new, need a new work item for handling the hardware transmission. Okay, and the next thing I will need is I will need a pointer from the type struct sk buff, which I will name tx skb. And basically, this sk buff struct represents one frame which should be sent over our interface. And here I will have a pointer to the current frame which should be transmitted by the interface. And here I have the various SBI commands. So here I have to add two new commands. So one command will be sent frame. And this com um, command has the number six. And I will need a command for reading back the interrupt. So get IRQ and this is command number eight. Okay, and maybe let's start the wrong way around. So let's start with the interrupt handler. So here is our interrupt handler. So what we're doing basically here is first we're getting our the private data of our set device back and then we are doing a, um, we are reading back the interrupt. But now instead of the hard coded eight I can now use the define get IRQ. And then I will double check if um, this bit here is set within my response because if so, a frame was transmitted successfully by the set device. And in this case, I will print out a message. Du -du 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 -du. Frame was sent successfully. And I don't want to print anything out here. And what I will do is I will use net if wake queue to start again the queue. So new queues can be added from Linux. So that's one thing I need to do. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to implement the um, a callback function which I will add here in my um, network device operation struct. So in here I need to add a new function which start xmit and I will call this function just set send. And this function of course I have to implement now. So let's implement this function. Yep, let's do it here. Um, the function has return value from the enum net dev txt. So in case of success, this function will return net dev tx ok, else an error code. And I will call it set send. This function has two arguments. The first one is from the type struct sk buff skb. This is the frame I want to send. And the second argument is from the type pointer struct net device net. And this is just a pointer to the networking device over which I want to send this frame. Good. Then first I need some variables here. So first I need the private data here. And what I will do, because the queue for our set device only has one, um, yeah, one place or can fit one frame. So the first thing I have to do is I have to stop the transmit queue because set can only handle one frame at a time. Okay. And we can do this by using this net if stop queue function, which I will use here. And then 
I will set the xmit um, or the tx skb pointer to our currently queued frame. Then I can schedule um, a new work item. And the work item I want to schedule is priv um, xmit work. And of course we haven't initialized this xmit work um, work item yet, so let's do this just in a second. And then I will return net dev tx ok to indicate okay the frame has been queued successfully. Good. And, but now we need a function which can be um, scheduled with this work item here. And the reason why we are using um, a work item here and scheduling this work item is because also this function here runs in an atomic context and we don't want to or yeah, we need to get out of this atomic context to use SBI transfers. That's basically the reason why we are not um, yeah, we, why we need this work item here. Okay, and then I will implement a new function which should be called by this work item here. And this function won't have a return value and I will call it set hardware xmit. And the only argument here is a pointer to our current work item. Okay, and now I need some variables. I need three bytes for an SPI command. I need a data pointer. And I need an array, which I will call short package, um, which is array of bytes with the len ethernet zero len. So this zero len is, this micro or define zero len should be 64. This is the smallest amount of the data field within an ethernet frame. <clears throat> and then I will need some more variables, one for the length and one for a status. And then once again, I need the private data of our driver. And in order to get them, I will use container of to get the struct in which this point of a work item is part of. Here we go. Good. And the first thing I will do is I will get extract the data and the length of the frame to be sent. And as I have stored them in this txskb structure, which is part of the private data of my um, of my networking device, I can extract them in this way. And in the case the data length is smaller than 64, we have a short, a very short frame, and we have to pet this frame to fit a size of 64. So the first thing I will do then is I will initialize the short package with all zeros. Then I will copy the data over to our short package. I will set the length now to Ethernet set len and I will set the data to the short packet. Okay, but this is all only needed if we have a very small frame queued. And then let's do the transmission. Therefore, I first have to pack my SPI command. So now I want to do a send frame command. The next two bytes are the length of the frame and first I have to send the upper eight bytes and then I can set the, send the lower eight bytes. Okay. And now we are ready to transfer the data. And of course, before doing so, I have to lock my mutex so only one function at a time can have access to the SPI bus here. 
And at the end, of course, I have to unlock the mutex. And I will use the function SBI write to write the data down the SBI bus. So here is the SBI over which I want to transmit the data. Then I have to specify the data I want to transmit and the size of the data, which is free. And on success, this function will return a zero. But if the value is not equal to zero, I will go to the label out and at out I will unlock the mutex. Okay, and then once again, I will have to do the same thing for, um, but I don't need this here. Um, I have to do the same thing for the data of the frame. So here I will send data or length bytes of data over the SPI bus. And down here if status or if not status, so if status is zero, I will print something out to the kernel slog. Um, Triff SPI device, um, and I will print out frame with bytes was transmitted or was sent to that device. Okay, so we are getting some feedback back here. Okay, and now we almost have everything put together. The last remaining thing is here I have to initialize this xmit work item so it will call the um, set hardware xmit function and then basically I should be good. Yep, so here in the probe function I will initialize the xmit work with set hardware xmit. Yep, that's the function. Okay, and that should be basically it. Let me try to compile this driver and let's see how much mistakes I've made on the way. Okay, I made some mistakes. Proof. Okay, here I have a typo, that should be easy. And I also have to take a look at the work item I have here. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Memory set. Okay, so here I have this typo. And up here, yes, this should not be a pointer. Okay, that was basically the error. Good, let's try to compile it again. Okay, then let's apply our device tree overlay to add our set device to the system. And then I will start up Tmux to spawn a second window so you can see what's ongoing here. And here I will load my set driver. And you can see basically frames are already queued to the interface and also the interrupt is triggered successfully. So actually we are already transi uh, transmitting frames, which is great. Okay, and then the next logical part to be able to use this network device in real life is we have to implement the receive function. But I would say that's a topic for the next video. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.